Hello there! Last episode, I gave a brief overview of the history of the plain Dominaria. However, leading into the story proper of the set Dominaria, there's one other thing that you ought to know. And that is that Dominaria is the home plane of the Gatewatch's own Liliana Vess. Liliana grew up some time before the Mending, as the daughter of a powerful general who led warring forces on Dominaria's northern coast. One day, her brother Jozu fell ill at the hands of her father's enemies, and Liliana, who was training to be a healer, was desperate to save him. At her master Anna's behest, she ventured out into the forest nearby her home to search for a plant called the Essis Root that could be used as a cure. In the forest, Liliana met and was guided by a mysterious man who claimed to be a supporter of her father. This figure, referred to as the Raven Man due to his tendency to appear and disappear in an... unkindness of ravens, informed Liliana that the only glade where the plant she sought grew had been burned by monstrous beings called skin witches that lived in the woods. While at first distraught at this news, at the raven man's prodding, Liliana realized that there was still something she could do. She had secretly been dabbling in the necromantic arts as a method to enhance her healing, and she thought that perhaps she could revitalize even a burned essence root enough to work as a cure. Although Liliana was bothered by how much the Raven Man seemed to know about her and her abilities, she still listened to him when he guided her to the realization that by infusing the root with the essence of the Skin Witches, she could make a potion far more powerful than anything she would have been capable of otherwise. With this new plan in mind, Liliana made her way to the Burned Glade, where both the Essence Root and the Skin Witches were located. All by her lonesome, Liliana eliminated all six of the witches and retrieved the charred Essis root. Returning to her family's manor, Liliana used the power imbued root to create a golden potion that she was certain would cure Jozu of his ailment. As quickly as she could, Liliana administered it to Jozu, taking no heed of her teacher's dire warnings. While the potion seemed to work at first, things quickly went awry. Indeed, the potion cured Jozu of his affliction, but at the cost of driving him insane and poisoning him anew. Jozu's eyes turned to glassy black orbs as he was transformed into a pain-wracked monstrosity. By trying to use necromancy as part of her healing art, Liliana had created a horrific fusion between life and death. Liliana began casting spells to protect herself as Jozu lashed out, but for each spell she cast, Jozu responded in kind. As the two fought, spells missed their targets and careened off the walls, killing Liliana's teacher and a host of servants who had been attending Jozu. Finally, Jozu grabbed hold of Liliana with a shadowy spell and held her aloft, poised to kill her, when something within her sparked. As Liliana's planeswalker spark ignited, she felt an incredible surge of power pulsing through her. Seizing it, Liliana raised the corpses around her from the dead, using this new mob of zombies to physically restrain Jozu. With that, she faded from Dominaria, and planes walked away to Innistrad. From there, the story proceeds as I told it back in my introduction to Innistrad video. In the days before the Mending, Liliana relished in the godlike power that being a planeswalker provided. Only one thing seemed beyond the reach of her magic, undoing what had been done to Jozu. After the Mending occurred over a century later and Liliana began to age, she turned to the Elder Dragon planeswalker Nicol Bolas for help. Liliana had always used death as a tool to be wielded, but now she could feel it breathing down her neck. But she would not let it take her. And so, Bolas brokered a deal between Liliana and four powerful demons. Kothafed, Grizzlebrand, Razaketh, and Belzenlok. They granted Liliana immense power and eternal youth, but at the cost of her very soul. Each demon had their own stipulations and agreements with Liliana, and Kothafed, the final demon she dealt with and her harshest master, actually carved the contract into Liliana's skin. Of course, Liliana would never have been content with the contract the way it was. From the very beginning, she plotted to kill her demonic overlords and win back her soul. 
So, after a few years of doing mercenary work for the Planeswalker Tezzeret and his interplanar mercantile organization, the Infinite Consortium, an opportunity finally presented itself. When Kothafed commanded Liliana to fetch the Chain Veil, an ancient and immensely powerful artifact from the Oniki Catacombs on the Plain of Chandelar, he unwittingly stumbled into his own demise. With the Chain Veil in her possession, Liliana finally had enough power to kill Kothafed outright, although he warned her that killing him would not get her what she sought. Ominous. Liliana was dismayed that killing Kothafed did not remove his etchings from her skin, but regardless, she went on to kill two more of her demons. She killed Grizzlebrand with the Chain Veil on Innistrad, and Razaketh with the Gatewatch on Amonkhet. And now she had her eyes on the demon lord Belzenlock, back on her home plane of Dominaria. One more thing to note though, although Liliana was once again young and powerful with three demons down, she was still haunted by the Raven Man, even after all these years. No matter where she went and regardless of how much time had passed, the Raven Man was always there, whispering and beckoning to Liliana, although only she could see him. I hadn't mentioned it up to this point because it hadn't really been relevant, but throughout all the major events of Liliana's life, the Raven Man had been there. He orchestrated the discovery of the Chain Veil on Chandelar. He protected Liliana from Jace's insanity-driven assault on Innistrad. He tried to get her to flee from the Eldrazi Titan Emrakul. He saved her life on Amonkhet by taking control of the Chain Veil after Liliana was swallowed whole by a sandworm. And when you think about it, it was because of him that her spark had even ignited in the first place. Liliana couldn't figure out if he was a figment of her imagination, another planeswalker, or what, but for whatever reason, the Raven Man had continued to plague her. Well, as a matter of fact, the Raven Man was neither another planeswalker nor a figment thought up by Liliana's deranged mind. As we learned recently in the Dominaria United story Homecoming, the Raven Man was, in reality, Limdul, an ancient, extremely powerful Dominarian necromancer. Limdul had a long and sordid history. During Dominaria's Ice Age, Limdul was a lowly soldier until he discovered the Ring of Mersil, an artifact which contained the life essence of a power hungry wizard who had lived two millennia prior. The Ring granted Limdul incredible necromantic powers, and he spent years terrorizing the land in service to the Planeswalker Leshrac. Eventually, Mersil took complete control of Limdul before the hand bearing his ring was cut off by Lashrak, robbing Mersil of a physical body. Limdul was then tortured and mutilated by Lashrak before being brought to the plain of Chandelar. There, Limdul was decapitated, but survived by transferring his soul to another body. Twelve years later, Limdul reappeared with a massive undead army intent on conquering Chandelar. Long story short though, he didn't manage to do that. Although his invasion was initially going quite well, when he tried to transfer his soul to yet another body, the body ended up in a comatose state, trapped with both its original soul and the soul of Limdul inside it, battling for control. While Limdul's soul eventually won, he was later defeated again, and his soul was removed and imprisoned within a magical artifact. While that particular artifact was later destroyed, some part of Limdul's essence survived on Chandelar within the Chain Veil. But that wasn't the only place where part of Limdul ended up. Part of his essence remained in the Ring of Mersil as well. This guy's like Voldemort, just haphazardly leaving parts of his soul in random artifacts. Well, anyway, the ring was eventually discovered and donned by the task mage Jaya Ballard. Limdul slash Mersil manipulated Jaya for some 10 years before fully possessing her. After an intense battle with the Archmage Joda, an old adversary of Limdul, Joda used an enchanted mirror on Jaya slash Limdul slash Mersil, which ignited Jaya's Planeswalker spark and cleansed her mind of Limdul slash Mersil. Some unknown amount of time later, an ancestor of Liliana discovered the Ring of Mersil and buried it under the family estate. From its place under the Vest Manor, Limdul, in the form of the spirit-like Raven Man, began to torment Liliana, with the goal of effectively grooming her to be a new, powerful body for his soul to take over. Once Liliana retrieved the Chain Veil, Limdul's connection to and influence over her was cemented. Anyway, Liliana, along with the rest of the Gatewatch, minus Jace of course, who was stuck on Exelon, had returned to Dominaria. Even despite her loss to Nicol Bolas on Amonkhet, Liliana was unbroken. 
She had killed three of her demons, and she wouldn't let anyone, not Bolas nor the Raven Man, prevent her from killing the fourth. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, share, leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought, etc, etc. So this video took a lot longer to get out than I would have liked. What else is new, huh? But I I'm really gonna try to get the next one out in a much more reasonable time frame. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.